O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup, you yourself who secure my portion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. This morning we're celebrating the memorial of uh, St. Martin de Porres, who was a Dominican brother who lived in South America. He was also a person of color. He was the son of a a Spanish settler and a black slave. And he lived just a very uh, humble and gentle life, uh, caring for the people around him. So we ask for his intercession uh, to accept the Father's mercy and to live with mercy uh, in the way that he did. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who led St. Martin de Porres by the path of humility to heavenly glory, grant that we may so follow his radiant example in this life as to merit to be exalted with him in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have among yourselves the same attitude that is also yours in Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance, he humbled himself becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. A responsorial psalm. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. I will fulfill my vows before those who fear him. The lowly shall eat their fill. They who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your hearts be ever merry. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations shall bow down before him. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. For dominion is the Lord's, and he rules the nation. To him alone shall bow down all who sleep in the earth. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. To him my soul shall live, my descendants shall serve him. Let the coming generation be told of the Lord, that they may proclaim to a people yet to be born the justice he has shown. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. One of those at table with Jesus said to him, Blessed is the one who will dine in the kingdom of God. He replied to him, A man gave a great dinner, to which he invited many. When the time for the dinner came, he dispatched his servants to say to those invited, Come, everything is now ready. But one by one they all began to excuse themselves. The first said to him, I have purchased a field and must go examine it. I ask you, consider me excused. And another said, I have purchased five yoke of oxen and am on my way to evaluate them. I ask you, consider me excused. And another said, I have just married a woman and therefore I cannot come. The servant went and reported this to his master. Then the master of the house in a rage commanded his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town, and bring in here the poor and the crippled, the blind and the lame. The Lord, the servant reported, Sir, your orders have been carried out, and there is still room. The master then ordered the servant, Go out into the highways and hedgerows, and make people come in that my home may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited will taste my dinner. The Gospel of the Lord. My group of friends uh, in college, we had a friend whose name was Crawford, and he would spend a lot of time with us, but there was something uh, particularly special about Crawford, which was that Crawford was a grad student. And we were at times, I think, a little bit in awe of the fact that this very talented and bright and older and grown-up grad student would want to hang out with us on a Saturday night. I think it must have taken a little bit of humility on his part to want to spend that time with us. And I think we were, in a way, I think we just felt very loved by the fact that somebody who was, in our eyes, so important and so great and so much better, in a certain way, than we were, uh, would want to hang out with us. And I think that that is, in a certain way, what most of us, what most human beings are waiting for, just for somebody to come along and sort of look at us and to just care about us um, as we are. This is exactly uh, what God has done for us in Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at, but instead emptied himself. He came and lived with us. He was sort of like the big grad student, and we're just the little undergrads who don't know anything, or are confused about life, and want some wisdom. And so he comes and he just spends time with us for 33 years, but not just for 33 years. He keeps living with us in the sacraments and in the church, uh, in the community of Christians. And so I think it's good for us to remember the fact that Jesus Christ has come among us exactly as we are means that we never need to be afraid of not having everything figured out. That is actually when we are most secure. At the moments in life when we think we have it all figured out, we usually make mistakes. And we don't have to fear because the all-powerful one has come and lived with us, dwelt with us, and is staying with us. The fact is that we are the broken ones, the lame and the crippled and the blind who get invited to this wonderful feast because of this very humble master uh, who just wants to be with us and spend time with us. Uh, there's a beautiful poem uh, that was written pretty early on in the history of the church, and it just says, very simply, about the Eucharist, draw near and take the body of the Lord. Draw near and take the cup of him outpoured. He gave himself for greatest and for least, himself the victim 
and himself the priest. We stand as we offer our prayers and petitions for the Lord. We pray for the church throughout the world, especially for the Dominican order on this feast of St. Martin de Porres, that we will grow always in joy and love of the Lord and love of neighbor. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our nation on this election day. We pray for peace in our hearts and the hearts of every person. We pray for a culture committed to justice and security. And we pray for the reign of the Lord of love in our nation. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are sick and dying, those who feel abandoned or alone. We we pray especially for those who are struggling with anxiety or depression or addictions right now. We pray for their comfort, their consolation, and their healing. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have died and those for whom this Mass is offered. For Christopher Goyette, we pray to the Lord. And for your own intentions. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our humble Father, you know all of our needs. Hear these prayers that we bring to you out of the poverty of our hearts and answer them through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. May these offerings of our service, placed on your altar in commemoration of Blessed Martin, be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray and grant that, released from earthly attachments, we may have our riches in you alone, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known, Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Martin de Porres, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son.
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we who are fortified by the power of this sacrament may learn to the example of Blessed Martin to seek you always above all things and to bear in this world the likeness of the new man. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank you for being here, and have a good day.